a recording in progress. Good eye. Okie dokie. So I'm going to give you a number and we're just going to play the first bit of each piece in order and tell everybody what the main teaching points for that piece are. Um, we put ourselves on mute or? No, no, we're not going to do it together so we can stay. Oh. Um, okay, so Rebecca, you are one, Kit, you are two, Ed, you are three. Jo will be four when she comes in. Uh, okay, so let's. Um, Take one twinkle variation each, Bex. You don't have to play the beginning of the twinkles, but talk us through um, the main things you're looking out for in the first variation, which is? Uh, busy, busy, stop, stop. Well done. Um, so we're looking for nice staccato stop, stops and deja shade, busy, busy. Good. Um, it's got a... Uh, Sort of string crossings between the A and E strings, and you're in the red finger pattern with uh, two and three close together. Great. Uh, to embed good intonation and a good hand position. Um, Great. The quick placement of the third finger from um, the teaching boxes. Great. Point. Well done. Very comprehensive. Can everybody put original sound on, please? If you're on a computer that will let you do that. Cool. Okay. Next variation. Uh, Doctor Suzuki. Good. Anything um, different? Different. You don't have to repeat everything that Beck said, but what's different about it? Uh, it's more staccato, -y, so making sure it's yeah, the, it's more detached. Good. Anything else? Um. In what ways are the string crossings different from busy, busy, stop, stop? Oh, it's like, it's not even. Yes, it's I'm exactly what you mean. Through. Yes. So some of them are at the middle and some of them are at the balance point. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in busy, busy, stop, stop, because you always change at the heel. It's at the balance point all the time. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, and it has rests, obviously. It's the... Bit, yes. the big change yeah. yeah good ed what's the next variation um what do we cover there i can really hear properly oh uh busy busy stop stop and dr suzuki uh so stop pony stop pony good well i'm pony stop pony uh depending which order you're doing them in if you're saving uh dr suzuki till later good um, uh so that this da, da, da. um so what's different? What's new about Stop Pony from the yeah. first two variations? Um, we have a faster string crossing or faster change. Excellent. Changing, right? Good. Um, and there is a slight grouping. We have two different uh, sort of both lengths or speeds. Not yeah. lengths, but speeds. Or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I think both, yeah. probably. Yeah, um, I don't, I'm not interested in being too prescriptive about exactly how many centimeters of bow they use, but I think most kids will use, yes, faster bows for the quavers and smaller, oh. shorter, slower, maybe. Anyway, shorter bows for the, yeah. yeah. Good, well done. Uh, Bex, next. Uh, Nelly the elephant. Good. Um, so that's nice legato bow strokes for the- Good. Um, the string crossings are a little bit faster than Busy Busy Stop Stop and, and Dr. Suzuki. For the, Good. Uh, triplets. Um, I think mainly it's the bow stroke, uh, which is different. The bow stroke and the? String crossings? Rhythm. Just yeah. having triplets. It's the first time that we've had something that's not in duple time. Yeah. Good. Kit? Uh, Fatter than Caterpillar. Good. Um, so it's very fast bowing. Good. Um, you got to, you know, make sure you've got, you got to like count properly so then you mm -hmm. ain't got enough bowing, uh, enough Good. notes for bow, bowing. Yep. Um, I 
Anything for the left hand? Uh, right, um, it's just faster movements. So it's yeah, of noise. exactly. So it's not, it's yeah, exactly not, the uh, same yeah. speed change for the string crossing and the left hand as which other one? Um, which other one has semi quavers at the end of each rhythm pattern? Uh, stop pony. Yes, exactly. So it's not new, but it's those two are the fastest changes. Yeah. Ed, tell us about theme. Um, an extension of the uh, length of bow used or the amount of Good. bow used. So Great. extending into the arm. Um, Good. You have, because of the length of the bow and um, the crotchet minimum ratio, there is a marked difference in thought or process of speed of bow and using the whole bow. Good. And how that works. Great. Good. And one other question for anybody who can answer it. Um, where where are we driving the bow from in the twinkle variations? What's the driving part of the arm? The elbow? Yes, the, the, well, the upper arm, the muscles in the upper arm are what are making it happen, aren't they? And that's why that extension is a new thing because we're not doing this to do the variations and then this to do the theme, which would be the same thing, but bigger. We're kind of, it's more of a whole arm with a bent elbow movement for the variations. Yeah. Good. Uh, I'm just going to text Jo and find out what she's doing. Oh, maybe she's texted us. So slow. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, good. Well done. Uh, Bex, next piece. Oh, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Cool. That was weird. That was uh, with original sound on. You couldn't hear. Oh. Me. Okay. Well, so weird. Turned... Okay. Uh... <laughs> this is just what happens when you're on Zoom all day. It's just we're gonna just have to be zen, chill out about the sound. Um. Okay. So yes, Bex, tell us. Next piece is lightly row. Good. Um. So you're going to be doing it with detached bows, like twinkle theme. Good. Although go back and do it legato and review. Um, Excellent. Legato. What box would you put in for the kids? Um, independent second finger. So Good. <laughs> Great. Um, there's also an up bow string crossing at one point. Um, yes. Can you find it in your mind? <laughs> Hello, Joe, we can <laughs> see you. <Yeah>. Hooray. <laughs> Oh, thank God for that. Okay, I feel like I'm pop. I'm here now. Yeah, very okay. loud. Have you got a mic? Yes, well done, Bex. Great. Uh, and you would put the twos after. Do, 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 two, two, two. That would be the box. Yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, Joe, what we are doing is going around saying the order of the pieces and what the main teaching points and boxes are for each piece. And we are up to Lightly Row. So okay. could you take the next piece, please, Joe? Uh, and next piece is Song uh, of the Wind. Sorry. Well done. Um, do you have your violin? Yes. Great. And do you, are you using a microphone? Uh, on my laptop. Yeah. Okay. Just the one, just, the one that comes on my laptop. You're just very loud. <laughs> just, uh, um, <laughs> I'm turning the volume down. Does that help? No. Um, I'll talk quieter then. Yes, I could talk you through how to turn the microphone on your computer down, but you can just talk quieter. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, okay, so Song of the Wind, um, main teaching points. Um, I'll leave my mute on as well, um, my practice okay. mute. Okay. Um, main teaching points, uh, hopping third finger. Yep. Um, what box would you put in for that? Pardon? 
What box would you put in for that? Great. Um, different size circles. So um, big circles and little circles. I would put... And the, um, final, the final retake is... The final retake is only on the repeat. Yes, on which string? Uh, a string. Yeah, yeah. So you've got big, big, big on E, big on A, and small on E. Yeah, yeah. Three different types. And this is my own personal feeling. I think if kids are clever enough to play the violin, which obviously they are, they're clever enough to learn the word retake. I don't really like circle. I'm, like when I hear a book five student tell me there's a circle. <laughs> feel very cringy about it and I just think why teach them something that they're then going to have to learn a different version they could just learn a two-syllable word but that is totally up to you lots of people do it it's not wrong but I, I just say circle retakes because um I was looking for the symbol for retakes the other day and I couldn't find it I always thought it was two diagonal parallel lines there isn't one but... so I invented one which is this the circle with the arrow which shows yeah. which way it's going because then you can do the up bow retake. Where does your first up bow retake come? A level two person. Um, so first up bow retake. Boccarini. Boccarini. Yes, well done, Boccarini. Was that good? Yep. Good. Okay, Boccarini. Yes, you're both right. Okay, good. Anything else in Song of the Wind? No, I think that was quite comprehensive. Well done. Ed, what's next? Uh, go tell. Well done. Main teaching point. Uh, uh, quavers in the up, upper half of the bow. Yeah. Potentially. What's the new uh, thing? I mean, I know quavers in the upper half. There's yes. an echo in there. Yes. Great. Good. That's all there is really, isn't it? Yeah. It's not really, it's a, it's a very much a light and easy piece, but that is the main new thing. Good. Um, I'm going to change the order so that I can just go around my screen. Sorry. So Kit, you're next. Um, would be Ocum. Yes, everybody's favourite. <laughs> Tell us about Ocum, Kit. Um, it starts on our bow. And kind of there's you gotta like play it. you gotta go to the middle of the bow and then you go up again. So it's two good. Up, just kind good, of excellent. Um can you find one more thing? That makes it hard. Would it be crossing, but like fast? Kind of no. Yeah, I I don't think the um, fact that it's fast. I think the string crossing is just quite tricky because it's like the independent two and the string crossing and the memory mm. and the up ups yeah. and bow bow distribution uh, just all make it. And most kids don't really like the tune very much. Most, well, this adult doesn't like the tune very much. <laughs> so yes, definitely a mountain piece. Well done, Kit. Excellent answer. Very comprehensive. Bex, next. Uh, May song. Good. So it's the first piece to introduce a dotted rhythm. Oh, whoever's got building building works. Just I'll mute. yourself on mute, thanks. Um, okay, yes, tell us about Maison. Cool, so it's the first piece to have a dotted rhythm. Good. Um, it's got an echo in it, so it's good for dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, it's good for string crossings, as it's got a string crossing with a dotted rhythm. Good. Um, it's a mixture of uh, legato and staccato. Good. Yeah, um, great. I think that's it, really. Yeah, okay. good. Well done, Joe. Right, next piece is Long Long Ago. Good. And that has quite legato blows, slightly longer in the length. Good. Um, it's got a surprise retake <laughs> to be aware of. Um, Why do you think it's a surprise? That's interesting. Because they always forget it. 
and I make a big deal of it. It's like this is the one place you have a retake in this piece. Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, you, it's the first time we go into the D string, so D one. Good. Tell us one more thing about the retake. There's something new about that retake. Can anyone find it? It's have like a rest. A string to the E string, so it's got a string to ah. the E string. Yeah. So we've not we've not learned. I mean, I don't. I don't think it's very difficult for them. The thing about the retake is remembering to go around and then it's just like putting your bow on the string, right? I don't think this is a big challenge for any of my students, but it is something new just to show off in your exam if you get something about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, excellent. Well done. Uh, what box would you put in for practice? Um, I would put in um, that circle. Yeah. Um, I'd also talk about it moving mostly by step. So I'd, it might be one of the first pieces if I haven't with Go to Light Rody, say to them, can you sing it through? Do you think you can work it out and see Good. where the steps are? Um, and I would go. Um... <laughs> For that, again, split finger trick kind of thing. Good, similar to yeah. what we had um... in. Do the two different endings at the end of the first and second line. Yeah, I don't think they really need, I don't think they need that in a box usually, that's just a memory thing, so you do it with yeah. singing, but can you just play us what the repetition box would be? Um. You're that's missing the, the vital, box. you're missing the vital thing. Yeah. <laughs> And make that yeah. box bigger yeah yeah exactly good well done and um ed what would you need to make sure you've done in the preceding pieces to get ready for long 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 go uh played on the d string well done how would you normally do that twinkle great these. perfect well done next I'll piece put my ed. Again. <laughs> thank you oh, is, the, uh, is the whining but... in the background of mine annoying people what's that there is <laughs> there is someone doing something with a drill or something in the background of mine, but it's quite far away. Can you guys hear it or not? No. No, good. Okay. Let's I think go for because it. everybody's home today, everybody's doing their. Yeah, home. yeah, yeah. It's like, would you just stop already? Yeah. Ed? All right, Allegro. Good. Uh, it's got contrasting bowing styles. Mm -hmm. The start out to middle. Uh, internet connection is on board. So um, it has a writ, slows down with a pause. Good. And uh, a big retake to be led correctly without a bounce. Good. Excellent. Um, One more thing. Lots of ringing A's. Loads yeah, that's really not what I was looking for. No. Um, staccato bowing, staccato bowing, the writ. Just play us the first line, please. Yeah. Yep. What do you notice? Fast staccato bows. Oh, well, you yeah. said that already. Fast fingers. Do, 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 do. Fastest we've ever had to move oh, right. fingers, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, slightly more bow, please, when you do the staccato martelet type thing. You're aiming for the three quarter point of the bow. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Great, well done. Very good. Kit, next piece. Um, perpetual. Good. So there's two parts of it, A and B. Um, so it's staccato, short, detached. Good. Um, and then 
and then for the second one it's faster well yeah faster bow strokes just yeah. attache just regular bows yeah not legato as such but yes no. good um yeah Tell faster us. and then obviously gets more... what's the new thing apart from the fact that you've got what you've already said <laughs> um Not string crossing because we've done that one already. Mm -hmm. uh, Play us the first line, please. Yeah, well done, but in the opposite direction, yeah. in the opposite, the opposite way around. Good. Yes. So you've got fours yeah. Yeah, yeah. introduced fours. Can you play us what the box would be for your students? Um, Would it be? Yeah, exactly. Perfect. And you just want to make sure that they've put the one down before they play that box so that they're practicing as if they're in that part of the piece where the one has already happened. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, anything else that you'd want to practice as a box? Um, what catches the students out? The end part. Then the yes. Two. Wonderful. Kit, you are doing excellent exam question talking today. Everybody is, but oh, I know that you were worried about it. Well done. Good. Okay. Um, I'm still listening, but I'm just going to, to, to the kitchen. Just checking yeah, something. okay. No worries. Um, Bex, what would you make sure that you have prepared before we hit perpetual motion? Uh, four fingers. Yeah. How would you do it? So in, it's four in the A string. Um, so like I'm a little monkey. Um, Great. Fingers. Great. And then so you can play I'm a little monkey, but with the four. With the fours, yeah. Um, yeah. Good. Great. Okay. Joe. Next. Oh, sorry. No, Rebecca. <laughs> that was a very, uh, very light question there. Right. Next piece is? Uh, next one is Allegretto. Excellent. Um, you're going to the G string for the first time with Allegretto. Um, it's good for string crossings, so you can either use fours or opens, so use opens if you find string crossings challenging. Um, it's got a hopping first finger to the G string. Um, it's got a pause on a note. Um, it's got a retake. Uh, the new thing is, apart from the G. Oh God, I always forget this, accents. <laughs> Well done. You you haven't you haven't done. forgotten it. You just didn't mention it first. That's fine. Good. Can you play us what you would put in as a box? Um, that would be very good. Um, the accents. Good. And you may or may not do the accents first time around, or you might put them in, in review. Good. Well done. How are the children playing the accents, Bex? Last question. Oh, um, they'll be sort of pinching a little bit between thumb and first finger and using a little bit of speed of bow. Yeah, mostly speed. Mostly speed. The pinch is just to make sure they don't skid. It's not a, you know, that we're not really like refined in changing the, um, squeezing enough to to do that the first time through maybe in review obviously in review you can do anything if you were working with a book four student you would have much higher expectations of how they would do that accents than if you were in with a book one or a book two student but um yeah initially certainly the um accents are mostly speed okay. good joe next piece and then tina tell us all about and tina please and Antino um, has uh, up by my name accent. Uh, 
Good. So you're requiring them to control the speed, um, fast bursts at the beginning and slow down, but to maintain the tone for the whole note. Great. Um, and I would, um, there's also a, an argument to be made for fourth fingers as to, you know, yeah. making sure that you're, depending on which you decide to do, whether you're going up the string, coming down the string, but that's a minor thing. No, we're not choosing whether to use the four. We are definitely using the four and then the open yeah, string. So some people don't do all of them. I would like everybody to teach what's in the book for that. Allegretto, I think you can choose whether you want to work on the on the string crossing or the fours. But for for Andantino, two, three, four, do, 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 two, three, a, do, do, do. and then the yeah. third line, you've got two fours. I don't do the second four, but certainly in the main tune. Do, yeah. do do those fours yes great yeah. um good so so take care of the fours is a better way to phrase it than an argument to be made because it makes it sound like you're giving them the choice <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> good be uh, careful yes exactly good anything else um if you do choose to do the fours in the third line can you tell us about that Kind of comes out of nowhere, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's the first time you've had a four that has no other fingers to help it. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Four, three, two, one. It's really like it's got no help. So how can you give it help? Um, you could do things like um and make them match. <laughs> <laughs> you could. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but in the actual to them, um, we could put a one down or yeah. An anchor finger to help them. Good. And what would that also help you prepare for if you put the one down? So you play one, four, three, two, one, a different piece further on. Anyone, this doesn't have to be me picking on Joe. Which which other piece has a four out of nowhere that we use the one to help with? Bedoying. <laughs> Some people call it. No, I've never heard that one. Okay. Minuet three. So second oh, one. Yeah. Do, 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 Donkey. Do, do, do. Yeah. Do, 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 do. One. Okay. So uh minuet three is the I'm just going to get my violin. Um, oh, my it's there. Just lump it. Yeah, yeah but that, there you have the one in printed. Yeah. The, the note yeah. is there, so they can't not do it, whereas this is could just be a full bit out of nowhere. Mm. Uh, I'm just going to get my fiddle. Ed, can you prepare for the next piece, please? So that was... Um, uh... That was under Tina. Tell us all about it. Oh, you're back. Hello. Um, Hello. It's huge. Yes. Why? Um, the, the string crossing patterns are just faster and more constantly just, they're just happening all the time. Good, good. Uh, some quite big leaps uh, from the D string up to the E string, I think at one point. I feel like it. Um, you were well, you do, you do have strings. the A in between, but only one note, yes. All yeah. four strings, yes. All four strings covered. Um, Other yeah, huge no. challenge. Uh, C natural in there. Good. Um, and then we get the end of it. So, 
It's huge. There's loads of stuff. Yeah. And it's really hard to memorize. Yeah. Um, um, of, the arpeggio is great. There's loads of arpeggio. Um, yeah. Good. So it's the first piece in G major. So you have to use low twos for the first time. But also, it's got high twos because it uses all the strings. Uh, it's the first piece you've had to play on all four strings, apart from a tiny bit in Andantino. Um, it's full of scales and arpeggio-y bits. Uh, what are we doing with the beginning of it, Ed? Uh, what are we doing with the beginning of it? The first four notes. Uh, the first four notes. Bum, bum, bum. So, um, We'd have our first finger uh, basically blocked down. One, yeah, can you just can you just show us instead of telling us? <laughs> oh no, we don't. We got the open. So, oh, this is a. What's happening? What's happening with your first finger? Or rather, um, what will you teach the students to do that you're not currently doing with your first finger? We've got to yeah. take it off for the A, right? Yeah, but you're keeping it right. on for the D. For the D? Yes. So you, you have your one arm, you add the three. So you're building the hand shape, so they've got both fingers down, and then they pick them both up at the same time. Yeah, is... Not. Yeah, yeah I it is printed. It is printed in the book, um, but you have to teach that very carefully. So I would make sure that you play it. Keep the one on. Add the three. Pick up both. You know, you can get them to choose a magic word. Okay, don't pick up your one until I say the magic word. Um, oh, yeah. There's there's also, I'm just going to see if I can work out how to show you this. Um, if you're going to be able to see my feet. <laughs> uh, they really like to do this little fun thing where you say, okay, this is my first finger. This is my third finger. So you're going to get ready to play. You're going to play one. Then you're gonna play open string. Can you see my feet? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, good. You're gonna play open string. Then you're gonna play three, and it's on a different string, so they're over like that. And then you're gonna jump, because you're gonna take them both off together. And so you can kind of walk along the room like that. So one, D, three, A, one, D, three, A. You see what I mean? Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That might get some interesting observational comments from people who don't know Suzuki's crazy for some things. Um, yeah, good. Excellent. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pick on someone else because Ed, you've done very well. Kit, what practice boxes would you give for Etude? The first. One that good, one that yeah. Playing. Good, um, describe your violin so you can play it to us because it'll be easier than explaining. Um, Um, you want a different question? Yeah. What will you make sure you've done with them ahead of time that will help them with the piece? To help them prepare for low twos. Oh, side go till. Excellent. Um, maybe finger marches and then the G major scales that are printed the page before. Yeah. Yep. Good. Bex, do you know what boxes you would put in 
as well as the first bit? Um, I do the last bit. Good. Um, yeah, depending on how good they are at the scales, they may not need that. But the bit that everybody does struggle with are these two little bits. So just these five notes. And because once you get to here, that's the scale. So they should be brilliant at that. That's the scale that should be brilliant. But it's the bridge passages that are problematic. Um, I'm playing in the, the in the wrong order. They come in the opposite order in the piece. But once you've got those, then you can say to them, "Look, here's the scale." Then you just know it. So you just have to practice those five notes, and that's obviously the arpeggio. So that should be uh, either they should be good at it already, or you can say to them, "This is going to be so helpful." So like, it's really great for you to practice that. And then it's kind of a fun bit to do. Um, and then they can just stick it all together and they've got it. Um, so I would recommend that you preview those two boxes plus the beginning while you're still on Allegretto and Antino. Um, and then doing the G major scale. Because if you think about a child who can play G major scale quite quickly and quite well, and if they've done those two boxes and they've done the start, if you look at etude, all you've got left to tackle is the memory and piecing it all together. Whereas if you think about a child who's just finished and Antino, who hasn't done any of that stuff yet, then you've got so much, like weeks and weeks and weeks of work. You can easily realize that you've spent half a term on Etude and everybody's going mad because they feel like they've just hit a massive brick wall. So you want to build it in ahead of time. Yeah. Teach the words as well, the Harry Potter words to Etude. Oh, what are the Harry Potter words? Because I've got an awful, horrible song, which I um, hate, which is, old and mother and father around. in it um, yeah can you put them in yeah. your whatsapp thank yeah. you i would love some harry potter words they're pretty good I like them. <laughs> would you like to sing them for us i'm not going to sing it i'm going to say it because okay this doesn't warm up at all afternoon harry potter harry potter had a favorite game he played with ronald weasley ronald weasley who would play with harry potter harry potter harry potter threw a quaffle all the way to Ronald Weasley, Ronald Weasley, but it crashed right through the window. Dumbledore came down the stairs and called to Hagrid. Hagrid came right down the stairs and quickly picked up Harry Potter, Harry Potter. Hagrid told him off and said, bad boy, get back to school. <laughs> okay, that's like very much the same as the other song yeah. in terms so, of the story, but much better. Good. Yeah, and the Harry you. Potter, whenever it comes up, are the same notes, and the Ronald Weasley, whenever it comes up, are the same notes. <coughs> water sorry that's how good those <laughs> words were good. thank you that's great lovely uh okay um whose turn is it well i think yes fine uh no i think we'll do an, we'll do another one because um we kind of all share that you'd kit next piece mini work one great it's got hook bows. Good. So first, yeah, first time. Good, which we tend to call minuet bowing. Oh. Because it's all through all of the minuets. Yep, lovely. Um, what do we need to think about in the minuet bowing? The hooked bows? Uh, the Excellent. You are on fire today. Yep, 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 yep. So. <laughs> what else? Um, oh, I don't know if this is one, but I remember at the beginning. We were getting confused of what the the da, 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 instead of like the fast one. Good, yeah. So that you've got sense. two, you've got two endings, which makes the memory a little bit more tricky. So I think basically, if you think about playing by ear, 
and playing by memory. Those are two different things in my mind that you can't always tell which is happening. So, I mean, obviously, if you're playing something without music, you are also playing it by memory. But the the playing a tune that you've heard so many times that you can just play it without thinking is different to having played it playing a tune where you've had to learn some memory kind of tricks to help you and I think that through book one we can see that like most kids if they're doing the listening properly up till Andantino won't have to think about the memory they'll just play it whereas Etude is the first time for most kids that they have to actually think like here I might play do, 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 three times in a row or they need something like a song or Oh, they think. <laughs> Thank you, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Uh, don't worry. Um, or they they have to think. You know, they have to think about the structure of the piece to know where they are. So they're kind of starting to build a mental map of where they are in the music in order to help them make it correct. And then the minuets are the first time that you you really um. Like you're building on that in terms of endings and stuff. So things like do 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 yeah do 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 the first time on the D string you've got crotchet quavers quavers crotchet crotchet quaver quaver crotchet and then when it comes the same bit of tune on the E and the A string you've got three plain crotchets. So that um, you know most kids will have to kind of think about that rather than just play what they know from listening. Good. Um, talk to me about fours in this piece, Kit. Um, or what practice box would you put in? You do. Um, you do this right. Great. Um, and what are you? checking when they play that um making sure the fingers are on the line maybe Good. they can tune the e and the a together great or well, the e and the e together um, yes yeah i mean e, yeah um, one more thing about the fingers related to attitude Can you just put your hand near the camera and play that box for me? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so you're doing it right, but what will lots of children do? I'll let you think about know. it, but okay. Um, so most of them will pick up the three unless you teach them to keep it down. So then you'll hear this. And the four won't be in shape. Oh, you're, no. not build it. you're not building the hand shape. So we practice to make sure, and that's what I know as the donkey, because it sort of sounds like eat or. Although I think yeah. donkeys go eat or so it's not a great analogy, but never mind. The kids like it. Um, and then when you do it as a box, once they've got that, you add this because often the two is not in tune because they've been stretching for the four. So then it comes up. So you need to practice getting them onto the C natural. Okay, yeah. good. And then obviously the one on the E and the A takes care of itself because it's exactly the same unless they've got some very yeah. weird sort of sensitivity to being on the other strings. Good. Um, anything else about this piece kit that you think is interesting? Um, think about the second half. Do you want to just play us the second half? So I think in the exam, everyone, 
when you if you get questions like this which you may or may not um do play because it's much easier to kind of a it takes up the thinking time uh, and it feels less awkward but also you will it will come back to you much more quickly if you're actually doing what you're talking about rather than just sitting there kind of thinking what does happen in the second half just say can I just grab my violin and play and they'll be delighted that you want to do that so just pass the second half kit if anybody wants to play along just put yourself on mute and go for it Very good. When you finish answering this question, you just need to tune to a tuning app because your A is sharp. Yeah. But um, tell me about what happens with the second finger that's new in this piece. Oh, hi. Good, high and low. Uh, yeah. yeah. So for the first time, you've got a mix of C sharps and C naturals. You've had high twos and low twos in the same piece before, but not on the same string yep good well done so please mute and tune thank you right bex minuet two cool uh minuet two it's the first time you've got slurs it's good the first time you've got a triplet good um it's really good for string crossing it's got like lots of odd patterns of string crossings um it's got slur patterns for string crossings and double string crossings um where's the double string crossing Oh yes, at the beginning. Oh, oh. <laughs> Tips of string. <laughs> yes. Um, it's got hooked bowings as well. It's got retakes. Good. Um, yeah, it's, it's got a lot. <laughs> yes, lovely. Good. Yeah, I guess that's the thing we didn't talk about with Minuet One, isn't it? We didn't talk about um, the dynamics, but these are really the first kind of. Um, sophisticated dynamics that we get and with minuet one you can talk about it being like a layer cake that you have mezzo forte and then the repeat is mezzo forte but then piano mezzo forte piano mezzo forte uh, and then repeated so it's not just a it's not just a victoria sponge like we've had before where you have an echo and then the rest is all the same mm -hmm. good excellent well done joe minuet three Minute three, you've got the um, string crossing slur. Good. So, um, so you've got to make sure that they've quickly done the string crossing and caught the string. Good. Yeah. But also, they've got a curved finger so that the A string is clear. Leave the three down until you've played the A. Because I find they get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you've got the grace note. Good. Um, I mean, I think the main thing in minute yeah. three is just loads of slurs, isn't it? Like, yeah, lots and lots of slurs. Two pieces ago, they'd never done a slur. One piece ago, they had one little slur or two little slurs. And now they've suddenly got like, I don't lots. know how many there are in the piece, but millions of them. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And I think to point out the pattern of down slur separate yeah. is really helpful for this piece. Very good. Um, I stopped asking and you about what boxes fast, you would. Fast removal of the finger for the bass note. Good. So it's got yeah. them off quite cleanly. Yeah. Um, excellent. Um, I'm just going to rewind. Bex, can you tell me what box you would put in in Minuet 2? Sorry. Yeah, so that it's part. a preview box. Good. Um, so it's the first bar, basically. <laughs> first two bars yeah and how would you teach that to start with um good yeah and for the and for the bow hand so you're just um silently moving to the d string good string crossing. it's like a nike swoosh this um yeah. this bow stroke they quite like to think about that so you kind of got this flick at the end yeah good uh and i think open strings are really helpful for the bowing Oh god, yeah, no, I forgot. Even though it doesn't make very much musical sense, it's just really helpful to separate the left and the right hand. Good. Anything else you would put in a box? 
Um, You've already talked about the slur triplet, so obviously we would do that. Uh, yeah. Good. Great. Marvellous. Well done. Joe, any boxes in Minuet 3? Um, yeah. Um. To start. Good. To catch. Good. Um, and then, so that isolated four there. Good. Um, and you're keeping the three on again, yeah? Thinking yes. about building this hand shape. Ready? Yeah. She's coming on from minuet one, the donkey. Um, and. Which I find it's quite four heavy. Yeah. Um, quite difficult for them to get. To centre the balance around the third finger rather than around the first, which good. is where I think the last half of book one is kind of shifting towards. Yeah, good. Um, and, hold on. <laughs> yeah. That's a tricky one. Yeah. Leave the two fingers down and add the two. Um, for intonation for the low two. Um, uh, are you teaching cat leave the two fingers down? Do you mean the three? There. Yeah, leaving the leaving the three down. Unless then, you want to make life really complicated. A, I sorry. Would, I meant I leave be. one down. <laughs> and then tucking a two tucking a two next to it. Yeah. And that bit's tricky because you've got the low twos and the high twos over the two different strings. Yeah. Good. And I would also and then, make, label the point of the slur. Because that pattern comes up a lot as well. Slur, good. step all the way up. Yeah. Which and what do we... Oh, hello, pussycats. Yeah. Who's that, Kit? That's your cat. What's she called? Or he called? Her name is Tilly. She's from Australia. Oh. Oh, yes, I forgot you have a Tilly cat. Bless. Yeah, I know. And the other thing that we hear a lot is. <laughs> which you have to be careful of because it fits. It doesn't take you to the wrong bit of the piece. It doesn't take you into the wrong piece. You know how, like, <laughs> I remember seeing one child play, start at minuet one, finish at minuet one, but somehow had we woven in bits of minuet two and minuet three during the performance and the poor pianist was just like what the hell is going on um so sometimes you take a wrong turn and you end up in the wrong piece but in on this occasion they it's very easy for them not to pick up that they're doing it because they just continue and they you know it fits even if yeah. they're playing with the recording it fits so you just have to be careful and talk to them about that thing about the memory and the map that when you're on the e string you don't play the one three it only happens on the a string yeah, the simple one here ending. Yeah. Can you can you explain what you mean? Like those words, simple one here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Nice. Great. Thank you, Ed. The next piece is. You're on mute, sweetheart. 2020 uh, all over again. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, the joys. Uh, that's all the minuets covered, right? So, yep. uh, happy farmer. Well done. Um, basically, hooked dotted bowings. Good. And have some fun before gossip. Good. New thing. Um, oh, but other than the hooked dotted bowings. Yep. To do with the hook stuff oh, going. Oh, oh god. Slow down, that wasn't meant to happen. Is it all right? Yeah, it's all right. Good. Show us the beginning, please. Okay, uh Kit, what have we discussed this being new at the very beginning? 
In fact, I wasn't sure and I had to go and check. Anyone remember? Um, so this is the first time we're extending down towards the heel. Yes, well done. Exactly. So we're starting maybe between the balance point and the middle, maybe at the balance point, depends. Yeah. You know, depends on the child and the bow. But uh, yeah, we're going, we're using the lower part of the bow for the first time. Yeah. Very good. Anything else to, what box would you practice apart from the beginning? Um, Uh, Excellent, Ed. Well done. Yeah. Very good. Yes. Uh, also, crossing. just a, a memory thing, making sure the memory between the two um, very similar phrases. Yeah. Tell uh, me how you would there. help your students to remember it. Um, I would, I would, um, let me play it. Yes, please. So, why don't you just play us the whole piece because it's so the short. First time you're going down to the D string. Next time. Okay, Ed, can you just play everybody? Can you go on mute? And Ed, can you just play the piece off mute, please? Play. So let's play, let's play the whole piece. Uh, Ed, I want to hear you. So you're, yeah, good. Not on mute. Everyone else is. Just give everyone a chance to get their violins. Seeing as we're on Zoom, can we have an introduction, please, Ed? But just give, give Kit a second. Brain's gone. Well, right, hang okay. On. Do you want to try one more time? Okay. Can you uh, take another approach? Uh, do you remember the structure of this piece? A. A. Well done. Uh, so it's a repeat. A. A. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. A. 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 Keep going. Um, B. <laughs> B. Um, B. No. B. I. I <laughs> okay. A. A. B. A. Two. B. A. Two. Uh, when we play it, maybe it will come. So some sometimes you'll find it easier to get the memory from playing. Other times you need a little like intellectual memory thing to remember like that, and then that will help you with the playing. So you just have to find which is right. Okay. One more time, please, Ed. One more time with feeling. Well done. Nice removal of the mute mid play. Sounded much nicer. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, not for everybody around me. Well, yeah. still sounds nice. They just might not. Yes. Anyway, um, be careful. This is a smooth slow. Got to sound very different from the hooked bows. Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> I really would recommend that you use a four there because you want your kids to be brilliant at fours. And you're using quite a lovely, sounds great, but a brushy kind of staccato. Most of the kids will still just be doing quite um, solid in the string. 
more votes, more uh, arm circles than brushy. Good, well done. So that, so I think um, that helping the kids, like I sometimes do down the scale and then a two three as the way to remember the endings sometimes i do uh it sounds like three blind mice but it starts on a two so we sing two blind mice and then we sing two blind mice again and then we don't sing it and then we sing pizza please pizza please whatever you just need a little hook for them to remember that it's the same ending twice in a row and then the bridge and then the second ending then the bridge and the second ending because most of their pieces have been like a sandwich haven't they and this is not a sandwich uh you're on mute yes joe sorry i was just saying the form again out loud oh, okay yeah no worries yeah so let's let's say it all together a a a b a a b a a yep cool good great okay Oh, Kit, you've got Gossack. I won't make you do all of it. Tell us some things about Gossack and then we can hand over to Bex. All of the, all of the pieces that we've played are in this one. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> More, please. Um, you have the eight famous notes. Excellent. What are you going to make sure you do with the eight famous notes? You've got to make sure make sure your second is high and then to take it down to make Good. sure it's low. Good. So, so you have to check that they're taking it off in between those two notes. Good. What are they not going to take off? The first finger at the beginning. Excellent. And how are you going to teach those eight famous notes? Can you describe your violin and show me how you would introduce it? What do you mean introduce it? Like the first time, well, first of all, when would you start working on these eight famous notes? Is it from minuet two? Yeah, during the minuets. I'm not really bothered exactly. When you play the 17th bar of minuet two, you must stop and introduce eight famous notes. But yes, good during the minuets. And when the very first time you show them how, what would you do with it? Would you just play it, play it um, just one note per bow? Just nice even, even, even more broken down than that? What, busy, busy, stop, stop? Exactly, well done, yeah. So uh, you would play, so um, Bex, can you take over? Well done, Kit. What would you, um, I'm gonna just switch between the two of you, so keep your volume, Kit. How would you, uh, you do busy, busy, stop, stop first, and then? Um, so you do. Stop with two and four up. Excellent. Good. So you're doing it in two halves to check that the fingers are down and up, you know, in the middle. And then you do it one note to a bow. Good. Two and four up. Good. And do it without the break, so. Good. And then you uh, do hooked bowing. Good. And then you start doing it slide. Good. Great. I, I would add to that though, um, if I may, that when you're initially teaching them, that's fine. But then you say to them, now you need to do it with less bow. Because yeah. sometimes they just, yeah. they haven't got the time in a piece to do. No. Happy. Yeah. And also, I don't particularly think it matters when you stop, stop the stop and check. I think you could do it when you said Bex. I think most of mine tend to introduce that once they've got it slurred. So by the time they're playing, then that's when we start to say, okay, can we try and close the gap? And that's the same time as they start to reduce the bow length. So basically build it so that it's correct and then refine it or take out the gap earlier 
but just make sure you have the gap for a long time. Very good, well done. Tell me some more kit, one more thing about uh, what's new in Gossack. Um, the, the, what are those called? Grace notes. No. Good. Yep. Grace notes. We yeah. have had them before, but they're more complicated. Excellent. Bex, more new things? Um, it's the first time you've got a pit. Good. More other, other things of note? Um, it's good for string crossings. There's like tons of double string crossings in there. Good. Uh, you've got hooked bowings, you've got slurs, you've got semi quavers with slurs with string crossings. Exactly. That's the that's the bit I think that needs to be kind of pulled out is like one of the newest things is yeah, slurred string crossing semi quavers. <laughs> and a new thing. Oh, we didn't touch on this new thing in minuet. Two. Oh, look at that. Ed's got staff bringing him cups of tea. That's not it. That's <laughs> mine. It's all doable. That's an excellent cup of tea to have right now. We're going to have a break in a minute at the end of book one. Um, so, uh, yes, what did we not talk about in Minuet 2? Hi, yes. Greens. Oh, <laughs> well done. Yes, hi, Greens. Don't worry. Don't worry, it's a Zoom thing. Well, it's a life thing. Uh, yeah, exactly. We forgot to talk about the introduction of the high three. That is the new thing. Um, and you've got more of those. Well, do, 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 do. Um, good. Uh, how would we teach Gossack Kit in terms of credits? Um, I know eight famous notes is one of them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm not really sure. Whether okay, we kit. Section by section or something. Yeah, exactly. Two lines at a time, get a credit for it. Next two lines, get a credit for it. Third set of two lines, get a credit for it. Last set of two lines, get a credit for it. At that point, normally I go into book two because they're sick to death, and so am I of this piece, frankly. And then we put it all together when they come back, maybe for graduation, maybe in between getting ready for graduation and finishing book one. Um, so I would not expect my book two students who are just starting Judas do Maccabeus to be able to play Gossip start to finish at credit quality. That would happen a bit later. Does that make sense? Good. Last thing, Bex, what boxes, what practice boxes would you have? I mean, obviously it's a huge piece and there are bits, any bit that they're struggling with, you'll need to put in boxes, but which will every child need in boxes apart from the eight famous notes? Uh, things like good. Um, another one. Good. Excellent. Um, Joe, some more boxes. This is also why I recommend you do it in in two lines at a time because that's just the first two lines. We've already got two boxes. So if you give them the whole piece. They're going to have like six boxes to do whereas if they have the eight famous notes which they've been working on for ages it feels like something different in their practice and then you have two boxes per set of two lines i think that's doable for most children so you stop doing the first two boxes once they've got their credit for the first two lines and then uh any boxes in the third and fourth line joe excellent that moving to yeah very good uh ed what about the third line and fourth line, sorry, fifth and sixth line, or the next section, depending on how your brain works. You're on mute. That'd be the fast notes, uh, which you've covered already. Good, yeah, and? Um, Do you want to just play that bit to jog your memory? Yes, keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, so it's this bit. Um, <laughs> can you I... play it? Can you play it for us? Um, <laughs> you can, you can. So all that string crossing, getting a nice bow, getting the weight of the elbow coming down uh, to it. It's quite. Uh, hard, what's though, the dynamic it? here? Someone on level yeah, one. Man. Yes. So we're not really worrying about arm weight, but what are we worrying about in the left hand? Tuning. Yes. 
Octaves. Good. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Can you just finish the line, please? Lovely. Great. And Kit, what boxes in the last two lines did you put in? The first that first bar of that one. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, can you play it for us? Good. The, yep, that would be a box. Keep going. Good. So which box? I mean, basically, all of that's really hard, right? So you may have a child who needs to learn that bar by bar as a box, and it's going to take them a couple of weeks to learn how to even just get their fingers around it. Um, but which bits will you definitely need every child of yours to have as a box? Just play it for us. Yeah? Why? Why is it di more difficult, for example, than this one? Because you have to do another big, quick spring crossing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's got the string crossing in the slur. That is tricky to get onto the D and the three and the smooth slur. Yeah, good. And then one more thing that you'll definitely need every child to have in a box. Going on to the G. Yeah, can you play it for us? good yeah i mean again lots of people will need that as a box some people will not but every child needs the new thing which is just play us the last two lines and then you'll get it yeah oh you want me to play it yes please the whole, the whole last part or the, just the up part? The whole last line. Or two lines, doesn't matter. Good, so what would the box be that every child needs? The last bit you've already you've already said it just play yeah you've already said that but the last bit oh yes so remember to go to the four yeah. my busking violin my actual violin is at work um okay good so that the pizzicato the last two is it two bars yeah yes you're definitely going to need as a box and then different children find the different configurations of the semiquavers hard some people um that one because again it's got the string crossing in the three others um that one some all of them so you just have to be responsive to the needs of your students great we finished book one Woohoo! so let's have a break um I think what would be helpful is if we come back at quarter past 12 and level ones, if I put you in a breakout room and you can practice leading pieces just to get playing through book one and level twos will continue doing what we're doing through books two and three. Does that sound okay for everyone? Yeah. yeah? Great. Okay, lovely. See you in 10 minutes.
Thanks. Bye.